Hey there YouTube, welcome to another Tech Me Out video. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you will be notified when new videos come out. Again, I am so sorry for the way my voice sounds. I am still fighting a very nasty cough. I do apologize for that. The topic of today's video is about running a virtual DSM virtual machine on top of your or physical Synology device. And you might already know that Synology devices, apart from being a great NAS, are also capable of performing other tasks. A, a one thing that they do particularly well is being a hypervisor. And you might already be using it to run wi Windows virtual machines, to run Linux virtual machines or whatever. One thing that I am, I suspect that not a lot of Synology owners know about is the ability to run a virtual DSM virtual machine right on top of your physical Synology device, completely free and unlike other uh, pirated uh, methods out there, this one is completely legal. You might ask, well, what's the point? I already have a physical Synology device with DSM running on it. Why do I need a second virtual DSM? Well, I can testify for how I found it, uh, found it useful and how I used it. For example, for testing. I spun up a virtual DSM device for testing, a, a, a backing up NAS to a NAS, using a, a hyper backup or a creating snapshot replications. I simulated a second physical Synology device. And then I came to a conclusion that a real physical second Synology device will be useful for me. But when I got the second Synology device, I already knew how the experience would be and what to configure and where. So this is something that is especially useful. You can also test other Synology applications, like for example, if you want to test Synology proxy application, you can install it on your virtual DSM, have a, a, a test VM routed through this proxy application and see if it's useful for you or not. And this way you are not, quote, polluting your production physical Synology device. So this will be the topic of today's video. It's really easy, really fast, really simple, and most importantly, free and legal. So let's jump into the computer and see how this is done. Let's go. All right, so we are at the computer and we are already logged in to our a, a production Synology device. And all we have to do in order to a, a spin up a virtual DSM, a, a virtual machine actually, all we have to do is, a, a, it's crazy how simple it is. Just open Virtual Machine Manager and go to Virtual Machine. As you can see, I have two virtual machines. One is powered on, one is powered off, it doesn't matter. I will just click on the Create, a, a, on the Create button. And here it is, this is the, the whole magic behind it. Choose Synology Virtual DSM. Next, storage, at least for me, I have no other options. Name, let's call it B DSM. I will give it two CPUs, four gigabytes of RAM. Click on next, real simple. The DSM disk image, is something that you will need to download in advance, and I will show uh, after the creation process where to get uh, uh, where to get this uh, image downloaded and ready uh, uh, to be uh, uh, to be used in this case. Create a virtual disk, let's say 300 gigabytes. That's enough. Let's see what options we have here. Space reclamation. Yes, indeed. I want that uh, uh, in this space that uh, was previ previously used in this virtual. DSM instance. Once the files, uh, uh, let's say, got deleted, I want this space to be freed from the uh, uh, in total 300 gigabytes capacity I gave it. So indeed, I want space reclamation to be uh, to be enabled. 
click on next choose what network to connect it to in this case i will connect it to my iot network just because this is the network i use for testing i will click on next auto start no in this case i don't want it to auto start permissions well that depends on uh, on the permissions you want to assign it uh, by default the local administrators group is something that uh, I will consider uh, uh, giving permissions, apply, and uh, at this point, uh, uh, the Synology VMM is creating the new uh, virtual DSM. We will have to power it on, and once it's powered on and it's uh, it got an IP address, we will see that it's exactly the same process and almost exactly the, the same wizard as a, 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 an out-of-the-box a physical Synology device. So let's power it on. And while we wait for this process to be completed, I would like to show you how to get the virtual DSM image that we saw earlier in this process, how to get it uh, downloaded and be ready for, uh, to use the, uh, in this case. We will go to the image section uh, of the VMM and then we'll go to the DSM image tab. And if you don't have anything listed in this uh, area, we will need to click on add and uh, uh, download virtual DSM image. That's, that's the, whole, uh, the whole process behind getting the virtual DSM, let's say ISO to be ready uh, 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 to spin up virtual DSM uh, instances. That's where you get the image. Uh, you don't get it anywhere from the internet like other illegal methods. Synology provides it for us. They want it. They want to let, it, to let us use it free. I think we are limited to two virtual DSM machines and the image is official from Synology. So let's go back to our virtual machine section. This is, and we'll see that still powering on, it's still getting ready. We will know that it's ready for us to use when we see an IP address populate right here in this section. This might take, that depends of course on the hardware of your Synology device, CPU, the memory of course, and this might take anywhere from two or three minutes to 10, 15 minutes. We will stop the recording right here and I will resume it once it's done. All right, so the initializing process is over and we can see that we do have an IP address listed in the IP address column here. All we need to do is to uh, remember what is the IP address the virtual DSM uh, instance got, open up a, a browser window, enter this address and start configuring this virtual Synology device. I already have a virtual machine running in the same network of our new Synology device, virtual Synology device. As you can see, the virtual DSM is replying to pins. Let's open up our favorite web browser and go to our IP address we got for the virtual DSM. And as you can see, exactly like a new out-of-the-box physical Synology device, we will enter a server name, let's say VDSM. Let's give it a password. Click on next. Click on go. I am not sharing my, my uh, telemetry at this point. And as you can see, we are ready to go. If you remember the Synology out of the box wizard, you might remember that there are a few steps along the way that were omitted from this wizard, like creating a quick connect uh, 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 login and installing some default programs 
well, you, you can see that this uh, instance was, let's say, tailor-made to be run as a virtual machine, but for all intents and purposes, this is a, a, a virtual DSM device with all the capabilities, with a package center full of uh, Synology applications. In fact, let's go ahead and try uh, uh, to install an application We'll give it a, a minute or two to populate. Let's go to the control panel. I'll go to the advanced mode. Let's go to the info center. As you can see, the model name is virtual DSM. It knows that it's not really a, a, a physical device. We got our four gigabytes of memory. This is the DSM version. And as you can see, there is other th other than the fact that this is virtual, there is almost nothing to differentiate it. Okay, let's go back to the packet center and see if things start to populate. Let's indeed update the universal search. Why not? On all packages, I think it will be a few more minutes until all the icons and the graphics to be loaded. But for for future videos, we will build upon this virtual DSM device. For example, installing Active Backup for Business. All right, we will let it finish. So we will install Active Backup for Business on it. We can, for example, install Hyper Backup or Hyper Backup Vault to do a, 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 a Synology to Synology backups, snapshot replications. A, 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 we can treat it exactly as we would treat a, a, a physical Synology device. So at this point, I will wrap up this video. And in the next video, I will continue to do tutorials. Some of them will be on this virtual DSM instance. So, my, my question, to you, question to you, did you know about this option of running virtual DSM? Would you have done things maybe differently? Please let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you, you will be notified when new videos come out and don't forget to hit also the bell icon. So, we will see you all in the next video. I wish it was informative for you. Have a great day, guys. Keep safe. Thank you.